All right. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Dead. Do shit stink? I was making a sandwich. I blow your balls off. I warned you! Welcome to the B-Movie Rollout, a place where we take a look at cheesy, low-budget action movies from the 1980s and remember why we left them there in the first place. Today is a very special episode of the Rollout because it is the final review of this season. I will have one more episode after this, but after that I will be taking a short break until early 2011. Now, usually I only review films from the 1980s or the early 1990s. But today we'll be taking a look at 2005's The Cutter, which was Chuck Norris's final film. Since I opened this season with Norris, I thought, why not end with him as well? Actually, I can think of a few reasons. This film was a disaster to work on. It spent ten years in production hell, and it had to be rewritten four separate times. And the final change demanded that all references to Israel must be removed. Why? In addition, Chuck Norris was not exactly at the top of his game. Walker, Texas Ranger had been done for a few years, and since 2000, he had starred in all of three movies, The President's Man, The President's Man 2, and Bells of Innocence, a rather strange Christian movie that was written by his son, Mike Norris. None of these movies really got any attention. Hell, his cameo in Dodgeball is more famous than any of these movies. Joes can play! This dude puppy cock! You can let them do that! Thank you, Chuck Norris. Thank you, Peter. Chuck Norris would retire from acting after the release of this film, and unfortunately, he did not go out with a bang. This film didn't even get a theatrical release, but rather it was straight to DVD, and got very little press. I remember seeing a blurb for it on Norris's website back in 2005, but that's about it. This film was totally overlooked because of the other big Chuck Norris news of 2005, the random Chuck Norris facts. They're dumb, but Chuck seems to get a kick out of them. In fact, he used his newfound relevancy to get a job writing a right-wing column for a right-wing website, guest hosting on Hannity and Combs. So what, what's this all about here? Tell us what the, the oh. album's all about. I mean... Really, who knows? We, we're in this very, very bad situation, and I don't think anybody has an answer to how we can get out of it. I wish we did, but... Okay, let's check in with Greta Van Sistren, who is standing by... ...and later getting involved in the Huckabee for President campaign in 2008. So did Chuck. Chuck Norris approved. Now that we know the recipe for this disaster, let's take a look at the cutter. Cut it. The film begins with a small aircraft flying over the Sinai Desert as the credits roll. The aircraft lands and a man jogs to where a small digging crew has discovered an ancient mummy's tomb. The man, named Dirk, finds the crew and kills all of them except for one, who is apparently working for him. Dirk cuts the mummy's cloths and finds some sort of jewel-encrusted artifact. He then kills the girl and flies away. We then cut to the exotic location of... Spokane, Washington? Really? Anyway, we see a woman being tied up as part of a kidnapping. The editing of this scene makes it almost unwatchable. Take a look. You'll never see your daughter alive. Oh, I'm gonna have a headache. We then see Chuck Norris, who looks like he went swimming in a tub of brown hair dye, in the same annoying editing style. Chuck is playing the role of Detective John Shepard, who is on a stakeout. Shepard enters the building and almost immediately starts shooting some thugs. The action is lame, and the acting is even worse. 
to J. Ruth Mueller. Shepard finds that he is too late and the kidnapped girl is dead. So he kills another goon. Yep. I needed some air. Could have made a call before you pulled a die hard. You actually said that? Yeah, don't reference a good movie and your bad one. It turns out Shepard is an ex cop turned PI who has been investigating a series of kidnappings. And change, you know the routine. The family hired me to find the girl parks after they lost faith in you. Oh, yeah. And you found her, all right. Hey, you know, Shepard, we had these guys as suspects in two other kidnap for ransom cases. Does that surprise you? Now what surprises me, Parks, is that you didn't connect these guys to the girl's kidnapping. I did. Hey, you know, where are you going? I'm not finished with you yet, pal. You aren't, but I am. I got a family to notify. We then cut to the exciting location of... Spokane? Again? Could they have picked a more boring place to film? Dirk arrives at the airport and heads into town. He's apparently looking for a man named Isaac Teller, who is a jewel cutter. Hence the title. So, no, this movie is not about emo high schoolers. Teller is out to dinner with his niece Elizabeth, who he intends to leave his business to. Elizabeth, you've really become a very good cutter. This is my legacy to you. It's a diagram of a cut I designed when I was in Auschwitz. It's called the Tolkowski modification. Once you perfect it, it will make you a great cutter. We then cut back to Shepard, who is working out. Family hired Wait a second. Chuck, where's that total gym? Isn't that the best way to exercise? That's what you keep telling me on all those late night infomercials. This is what's great about the total gym. It works on all the muscles. You name it. Chest, arms, thighs, biceps, shoulders. And at the same time, it's working the gut. A great workout. Great exercise. Now, for the first time ever, you can try a total gym absolutely risk-free. Dirk finds Teller and asks if he will cut the gems from the beginning of the film. After he agrees, some goons kidnap Elizabeth. Conveniently, Shepard sees this and gives chase with his creepy ass van. Is it just me, or should the cop be driving the Ford and the kidnappers be driving the rapist van? The car chase ends, and Shepard disposes of the goons, but Elizabeth runs off. We then cut to, oh god, please, anything but Spokane. Aw, oh, son of a bitch. Teller and Dirk arrive where the jewels are, and Teller agrees to cut them. But trouble arises when he asks Dirk how he wants them cut. What uh, design do you have in mind? I want them cut into matching brilliance. 85 facets. First designed by Marcel Tolkowski as a variation of his original brilliant. And then, in Auschwitz, you changed it. Perfected it. The Tolkowski modification. Who are you? To come swave and ask who wished on. Okay, I don't know what any of that means. It sounds bad. Meanwhile, Shepard is being questioned by the police, but his lawyer bails him out. Hey, uh, where do you keep the batteries for that shirt, Eddie? <laughs> You're a scream. I'm finally taking a vacation. Where are you going? Paradise, baby. Which means anywhere but Spokane. What have you done with Elizabeth? Cut the stones, old man. Or I'll bring Elizabeth to you one piece at a time. Teller then has a flashback to Auschwitz. This is my legacy to you. Jesus, the crap in Flash Gordon was more tasteful than this. Hmm, now he showed promise. Elizabeth hires Shepard to find Teller, and Norris names his price. How much? 20,000 cash. Oh, bullshit, Chuck. This movie had a budget of $10 million, and the word is, you got the lion's share of that. I didn't earn it. Shepard and Elizabeth go back to Teller's house to investigate. 
While they are there, Shepard is attacked by a man with a taser. Shepard? Oh my god, that is hilarious. Don't tase me, bro! Ow! 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 The man runs off, and we cut back to more Auschwitz flashbacks. Time. One piece at a time. One piece at a time. One piece at a time. Meanwhile, the man who tased Shepard finds the body of Teller's business partner and is then killed by dirt. Who is then chased off by Shepard and Elizabeth when they arrive. It turns out that the man was an agent of Interpol. We also find out that the breastplate with the gems on it is actually a biblical artifact. Also, as it turns out, Dirk is working for a man named Spearman, who was a Nazi war criminal who oversaw the jewel cutting done by Jewish prisoners at Auschwitz. So a Nazi war criminal has hired a freelance hitman to kidnap a Holocaust survivor to cut jewels from a biblical artifact. You keeping up with this? If not, don't worry. Here's a cheesy Chuck Norris one-liner. Why don't I take you down to police headquarters and you can divulge it there? How about that? You serious? Calvin, I'm as serious as a heart attack. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. Shepard and Elizabeth catch up to Dirk and Spearman, but Dirk sees that they're being followed. He heads off on foot, so Shepard follows him. Meanwhile, Elizabeth tails Spearman's car. They pull into a warehouse, but... It's a trap! I tailed the town car. Shepard follows Dirk onto a bus and confronts him. Or do I have to beat it out of you? <laughs> So it's your average ride on the bus. Shepard gets his ass kicked, and Dirk forces the bus driver to keep going. He rendezvous with Spearman at the warehouse, which is holding Teller and Elizabeth. What do you think, old friend? Never again. Auf nimmer wiedersehen, Salman. Oh! 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 This is for my family. Shepard discovers the warehouse by using a cell phone recording and, well, I suppose we'll call it intuition. Shepard storms in and shoots Dirk, and discovers Elizabeth is wired to a bomb. Shepard takes the bomb off Elizabeth and frees her and Helen. ends with your typical good guys getting patched up at the ambulance routine. And so ends Chuck Norris's cinematic career. It's not as bad as it could be, but that doesn't mean it's good. It will keep your attention, I guess, but it doesn't have any rewatch value. It lacks Norris's kick-ass kung fu action of the 1970s, the over-the-top action schlock of the 1980s, or even the unintentionally hilarious self-worship of the 1990s. Rather, it reeks of his lackluster mediocrity of the early 2000s. My name is Joe, and I want to thank all the fans out there who checked out season one of the B-Movie Rollout. I plan to have one more surprise episode up very soon, but after that I'll be taking a short break until early 2011. In the meantime, feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel, check us out on Facebook, and keep an eye out for a teaser for season two. Thanks again for watching. Play us out, Chuck. Sorry guys, this is an emergency. I'm Chuck Norris. Cause the eyes of the ranger are up on you next. Any wrong you do, he's gonna see. When your indexes look behind you. That's where the ranger's gonna be. Camel jockeys.